So how do we know for sure if we are tapping into the fullness of faith that is available to us through Jesus? Because it seems so many people are stuck in financial situations, health challenges, relationship issues, month after month, sometimes year after year. So I want to share what the Lord has revealed to me, something that is so simple that we are all getting tripped up with, that's blocking us from blessings that are rightfully ours. God is not keeping them from us. And in most instances, we are blocking ourselves from getting what we are praying for. Make sure that you listen through to the end of this video, because it's not the answer that's powerful. It's understanding it that will change your life. It's the applying it. So this will be a series where I will kind of build week after week so that we can really understand and put this into action because knowledge without action will not produce fruit. Hi, my name is Kristen Kahns. My heart for making these videos is to inspire you to take action in your life and become the fullness of who you've been created to be. So if that interests you, like, subscribe, comment below. I love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so let's dive into this. So the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please him. But what is faith? Faith is basically the full acknowledgement of God's revelation or truth without proof or evidence. It's the belief in God for something not yet in existence in the physical. And faith is ignited by the Holy Spirit in our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions through intimate union with God. And faith is a thought infused by the power of the Holy Spirit to believe God's promises. So how does a thought get infused with power by the Holy Spirit? The more that we align ourselves with God, the more he is magnified in and through our lives. The Bible clearly tells us the kinds of thoughts that we should have. Philippians 4, 8 says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and admirable and excellent and worthy of praise. In Hebrew, the word for heart is leb. And in Greek, it's cardia which both mean our mind and our inner man. So heart and mind in the Bible are the same thing. And they are referenced almost a thousand times. So this is an area the Lord really wants us to pay attention to. So how can we tame our mind? So in 2 Corinthians 10, it says, we take we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. It says every thought captive. It doesn't say, say some, it says every. So is there anyone else out there <laughs> that struggles with taking every thought captive? How do we really take every thought captive? This has become my life's work. Becoming Self-aware, in my opinion, is the most important skill that you can have. Because when you learn to pay attention to your thoughts, you can identify if they are aligned with Christ or not. And if that thought is serving you to move forward in your life or it's keeping you stuck. It turns out that 85 to 95% of our thoughts are generated out of our subconscious mind which means 85 to 95% of the time, we are on autopilot. We are just operating out of a program oblivious to what's really glowing, going on. Faith is the secret ingredient that allows us to tap into the power of God. But how does that really work? Now, I feel like I shouldn't have to say this, but I will. Just because we ask for something, pray for something, want something does not mean that it's in God's will. But don't let that be a cop out because at the same time, there is a lot that he does want for us that is already ours that we don't receive. Not because there is a problem on God's end, 
but on ours. We are blocking promises, thinking that we are in faith, but we really aren't. And when you become more self-aware and understand how every thought impacts the natural and the spiritual realm, you are able to take hold of the promises that are available to you. So God isn't a magic genie deciding what prayers he'll answer and what ones he won't. And we are not robots that he controls. He gives us free will and he's created spiritual and natural laws to ensure our free will is protected. So faith isn't just this passive hope that something will happen. It's an active supernatural force that shapes your thoughts, your emotions, and ultimately your destiny. We activate faith through our thoughts and taking them captive. And this is what we so often do. So I'm going to kind of give you an example. So we pray for healing or for provision or breakthrough. And we meditate on the word and we worship and we pray and we have our quiet time. But when that quiet time with the Lord is finished, we start judging a loved one for getting angry in traffic. We're unthankful. We are critical of this and that. Um, We call a friend to complain or to gossip. So in an instant, we go from this deep place of worship to life. We allow ourselves to get triggered and we return back to those old familiar thoughts and emotions. And the thing is, we're operating out of our subconscious. We're on autopilot, mostly unaware that we are suppressing the supernatural. We are dulling our ability to hear clearly how Holy Spirit It's trying to guide us, to give us that wisdom and direction about what we were just praying for. So don't expect anything in your life to change if you are operating on autopilot. And we are all operating on autopilot if we are not making an intentional effort to be aware of our thoughts and taking them captive. So it's not God not answering our prayers. We are unknowingly being double-minded. We are not living a life of love. Yes, we're doing loving things, but what type of thoughts are we playing in our mind on autopilot minute by minute, day after day, year after year? They're mostly negative. And when we become aware of what's truly happening in our mind, we're able to identify thought errors that were hidden and then be intentional about choosing new ones. And when we do this, we act more from a place of love. We draw closer to God and it's that humbleness, that partnership, with God and that maturing within us that releases the supernatural, that releases those suddenlies, that orchestrates divine opportunities that we have been praying for. There is a war over our thoughts, over our minds, because our thoughts are the root of our soul, which is the house of our free will. So if the enemy can mess us up in that area, that's where our power as humans lives. And when we align our love-centered free will with the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, that's when signs and wonders and miracles happen because we're submitted. And the more we align ourselves with love, the more we come into that fullness of who we are created to be. And the glory of God is on display through us for the world to see. So often 
our thoughts and our feelings that we live in for 23 hours of the day, even when we're sleeping, we're operating out of subconscious. They mirror that, they don't mirror that one hour in prayer that we're spending. Maybe we spend two, that one to two hours that we're spending with the Lord in prayer and worship. That's why the Lord tells us, meditate on the word day and night. We can put this into practice because I've always wondered, like, how do you do that? How do you meditate on the word day and night? We can put it into practice by taking our thoughts captive. Because when you are thinking all the time, what am I thinking? Is this right? Does this align with God? Then that's how we align with him. It's not about being able to spout out Bible verses. It's about, about allowing the word to be alive and active in our soul. That's where the power of God is released through our free will of our soul. And remember, our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. So when we choose to turn from our human nature of thoughts focused on pride or lust or fear or any type of negativity, we can say, no, that's a thought error. I choose thoughts of love, of gratitude, of joy, of peace. That's when Holy Spirit is magnified within us because love moves the heart of God. But the reality is that most people are completely out of touch, out of alignment, out of tune with their thought life and emotions, which is contradictory to the faith that they think they are having in a situation. So we can't like section out or compartmentalize our faith for breakthrough and then go throughout the day, the majority of our day being angry or depressed or critical or fearful. We're sending like mixed signals. In other words, we are speaking the right words. We're thinking the right words in our conscious mind, but our true intentions and beliefs are revealed through our subconscious. And because our subconscious is our autopilot, we are completely unaware of the thoughts coming from there unless you make the effort to identify them. And that's why so many of you right now are probably thinking, Kristen, I am super positive and full of faith, I am not that person that you are talking about. But the way, you might not be, but the way that you know for sure is if you're in alignment or not, is by the fruit of your life. It's not about a challenge-free life, but it is about overcoming them and not dealing with the same challenge year after year. I really want to help take the mystery out of this. If you are crying out to the Lord to fix something in your life, and it seems nothing is changing, he's waiting on you. And this is my point in making this video. I see too many people waiting around for God to do it and not taking responsibility, or they are taking action, but because their thought life is not lining up to the word of God, they are unknowingly sabotaging themselves. So if you've been stuck in a certain area of your life year after year with things continuing to decline, God has not forgotten about you. He's just calling you to a higher place, just like a parent. He wants to see his kids dig deep and find the greatness that he's put in them, that is within each one of us, because he has more planned for us than we can ever imagine. But you won't be able to carry the blessing if you don't grow and mature and see what's inside of you that the Lord has created you with. 
to discover for this time in your life. So remember, the kingdom of God is within you. That's Luke 17, 21. I know this message can maybe touch some sensitive spots. And I only share from experience. I have been this exact person I described above, stuck, frustrated, and wondering why things were not only not changing, but getting worse. And it was painful, but also reassuring that I was stuck because of me, because I can change me. But it wasn't God not answering my prayers. There were lots of tears, lots of tears, pushing through the hard, coming to terms with how I needed to change and share. Um, yeah, lots I had to come to terms with, with how I needed to change. Um, I made a video, I think it's called um, the question that I asked God that changed my life. So if you kind of want to know like how this all started and what he said to me, that led me on this journey that I'm on now, living it out, um, you can go check that out. But really the beauty in this thought work, it's about the change from within that produces the breakthrough in the natural that we've been praying for. God could have changed my situation in an instant, but he didn't because he is less interested in my comfort and more interested in me becoming who he's created me to be. And if he just fixed it like a magic genie, then I would still be in this negative thought pattern contrary to his word. I would not have grown and matured and I would not be able to help others great breakthrough in their life. Remember, our struggles are really never about us. It's about the kingdom. And us stepping out in love moves God's heart and his power is released. So be encouraged because all that the Bible teaches is for us and is ours. But we need to exercise our responsibility and free will to partner with God and go out and get it. Okay, so next week is part two. I'm gonna dive into a little of the science because I want to paint a picture that helps you put this into action. Because without action, like I said in the beginning, nothing changes. But when you get a hold of this truth and put it into practice, anything is possible. So I love you guys. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next week.